Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and I'm back with another video. Season 22 is going to start on the 20th of November. Really excited. Absolutely can't wait for it. So I think it's about time we bust out the Filthy Casual tier list. Now, this is going to be aimed at solo play. It's going to be aimed at casuals. So we are going to consider how far these builds push when we rank them, but it's not going to be the be-all and end-all. Points are going to be scored for things that are good at keys, good at bounties, easy to set up. Points get awarded for being the starting set. We're also going to try and consider newer builds just to kind of keep the game a little bit fresh. Now, I'm going to pick three builds for each class. So we've only got 21 builds in here. Can't cover all of them. Obviously, it was quite hard on PTR to test so many things with that fourth open cube slot, which is going to be part of the season theme. But if you do have any questions about builds that don't appear on the list, stick it in the comments. and I'm sure someone, if not myself, will get back to you. But yeah, other than that, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Do consider subscribing. And as always, guys, a thumbs up brightens my day. But let's kick us off in the C tier. So first up, we're going to go for Zombie Bears, which is going to be a build on the Helltooth set. Now, the Helltooth did get a buff this patch, and also Zombie Bears actually got some items, got some supporting multipliers. Now, this build looks really cool. It's probably quite a bit behind Mundanugu, which is probably the Witch Doctor's best build. Possibly it's competitive with Jade, possibly it's competitive with Zunis, it's kind of in that next kind of tier down, but it is an awful lot of fun to play, and as I say, it does look pretty badass, so this is probably a push build, it's probably not amazing for speeds, but it's a lot of fun, and hey, it's new, I might be playing this on hardcore, I haven't quite decided yet, but Zombie Burst gets in in the C tier. Next up, we've got another Witch Doctor build, and this is going to be Zuni Masters. Now, Zuni works on Dagger of Darts. This gets a fair bit of juice out of the cube because, for instance, we can now take the Ore Guild set because Zuni's doesn't have any shoulders. We can obviously use that fourth cube to get in the Lacumbas in there. And Zuni's actually is quite nice for speeds. You can run it with a Sage's set quite easily to get extra DBs. You can use Canes for keys. There's lots of bits and bobs you can do with this. So Zuni's is pretty flexible. Again, C tier because there are just so many other builds that are stronger. This obviously isn't going to be the Witch Doctor's starting set. Mizuni Massa is always one of my favourite builds, the Dagger of Darts. It can be a little squishy until you get your fetishes up for your damage reduction. But again, with the season theme, I think that's just going to be so much easier. You could even take the belt of Transcendent straight away, and that would help you out a bunch with toughness. So next spot in the C tier is going to go to a Crusader build, and this is going to be Condemn. Now, I've done a guide on how to farm keys gems and dbs with this because it really does suit well for t16 with the extra cube slot we're going to be able to take the norvald set so we can really hit very hard with these condemns i didn't try it for grs on ptr but it is still going to be a decent gr speed build there's going to be lots of multipliers and modifiers that you will be able to get into it so if you do fancy a little bit of a blast from the past and playing condemn which hasn't really been too powerful over the last few seasons then this is certainly a solid option I probably wouldn't push with this. I mean, you can push with Condemn, absolutely no problem, but it specializes in wave clear, AOE damage, so its single target is a little bit lacking. Again, there will be much better push builds for the Crusader, but Condemn is an awful lot of fun, and it's certainly one of my all-time favorite builds. Now next up in C tier we have the Multi-Shot Demon Hunter. This is a phenomenal build for keys and for bounties and for those low speed GRs. It's an okay push build. Again, it is outshined by other Demon Hunter builds that we're going to have on the list. But Multi-Shot has been around for a long time. It's an awful lot of fun. We don't get massive amounts out of the cube for this build. I think we can probably just chuck a COE in and we should be absolutely fine. So it does get a nice power buff. If you haven't played Multi-Shot for a little bit of time, then perhaps now is the time to do it. Again, it isn't the starting set for the Demon Hunter. Otherwise, we probably would rank this a little bit higher. But it's certainly a fun build. It's certainly really easy to play. It's incredibly tanky these days because it did used to be a little bit squish a few seasons seasons ago but yeah multi-shot an awful lot of fun very fast you will have a good time if you play this next up in c tier we're going to have the twister wizard now this is pretty much going to be a push build now you can run this on legacy of dreams but you can also run it on the dmo set which obviously is much easier to get your hands on again this isn't the starting set for the wizard blizzard have taken a bit of time to try and rework the twisters we've got the corner stacking mechanic is being back but as i say i think this is probably going to be a push build it may well be the wizard's strongest push build we'll just have to kind of see how things go it's obviously we're obviously not too sure at the moment as to what will be the best but twisters it you know it's new we haven't played them unless you've been on console if you've been on pc you haven't played these for a while so it is kind of nice this will be a channeling build so it will be a kind of slower paced one so again you will be able to make some kind of speed build with this but i view this primarily as a push one but because it is probably one of the wizards better builds we're going to include it in the list and rounding us out for the last build in the C tier is going to be the Uliana Monk. So this is Exploding Palm. Now, 
The set has been changed for PTR. It's been given a 77% damage reduction. So that now makes it really easy to play because it is very tanky. That's a huge amount of damage reduction to give to a build. There hasn't been any power increase, but obviously we can use the cube for a little bit of extra juice. Exploding Palm is an awful lot of fun to play. You know, exploding those targets is very nice. It is maybe a little bit challenging because there is a snapshot mechanic that you kind of have to master. But ultimately, again, it's something that's been changed for the Monk. Monk hasn't had many changes. Also, it's not the starting set, and it doesn't quite compete with some of the other options that we're going to have. But still, it's an awful lot of fun. Blast from the past again. Classic build, kind of being resurrected with some of the changes. Now, moving us into the B tier. First off, we're going to have the Thorns Bomb Crusader. Now, I was a little surprised this didn't get a rework back up because it was so powerful on PTR first time around. Then it got nerfed. I think the nerf is probably a little too harsh. It is going to be a push build. It's really tanky actually for a push build. So early on, if you're not getting too many Paragon points, this is quite a good option to push with the Seder because it is quite nice. You probably can build some form of speed build with this because it does AOE damage on the move. However, I would probably build something else out because there are better options for the Crusader. I think Condemn, as we covered, would be better for speeds. And also the other Crusader build on this list also will be nicer for speeds. But again, this is a blast from the past. The belts of the trave has been changed. The multiple drama has been changed. We've got a lot of items buffing this. Those bombardments really do hit like trucks. You should have a quite a good time clearing very high. And as I say, it's interesting because it is thorns. Thorns can't crit. It's going to take you a long time to build this out. So if you want a slow burn of a build, then maybe you could go for this and perfect your gear across the course of the season. Next up in the B tier, we have the Archon Wizard. We're going to be able to take the Crimson set because of the cube changes for this season. That's going to be great. It's more cooldown. It's another modifier to the build. It's also more damage reduction. Probably one of Wizard's better speed builds. It is an awful lot of fun to blast through rifts pretty quickly with this. It's also going to be a very strong option for pushing. Again, I'm not entirely sure what's going to be the best push build for Wizard. It might not be Archon, but Archon obviously is quite easy to play and it is pretty fun. So it's going to be a pretty solid option for you. And next up in B tier, we've got the Barbarian starting set. This is the Frenzy Savage Barb. We get these pieces from Hadric for free. It's really easy to put together. For a push build, it is very strong. You can go very high with only, say, 800 Paragon points and low level gems. The only thing I would say about the Frenzy Barb is it's not amazing for speeds. It doesn't have wave clear, so you can do speeds with it. It's just they're going to be a little bit slower than picking something else. It would be nice if this had more of an AoE effect, but obviously it is a single target skill. It is super nice to bash the Rift Guardian and batter them really quick. Again, you attack absolutely bonkers fast. And again, with the cube, we can also make this more powerful than it has ever been before. So it's a very solid start and gets a place in B tier. Next up, we're going for the Impaled Demon Hunter. Again, Impaled is going to be as strong as it ever has been because of the cube changes, because we get that fourth extra slot. Impaled's always been pretty tanky. It's always been very easy to play. It's pretty much got infinite resource once you get it set up correctly. It's an awful lot of fun. Now, it did get quite a good buff last season, but obviously everybody was playing the Gears of Dreadlands. I do think it possibly got a little bit overlooked it is still very powerful it is very strong so if you do fancy a little bit of break from spin to win on the demon hunter you build yourself an impaled dh it will do speeds it will do gr push keys maybe are a little bit fiddly with this possibly not the greatest option for keys but again the infinite resource on the teleport is very nice so you certainly can play it in t16 if you'd like to next up in b tier i've gone for leap quake and slam now the reason there are two builds here is because they both work off the same set so leap quake is going to be a really good push build for the barb it's got tremendous toughness it's got really nice aoe damage Again, lacking a little bit in single target, but it is so powerful, you will be able to go very high with it. I think it will be one of the better options to push for the Barbarian. Now, Slam Barb, you can pair with Leap Quake. It's probably better at speeds than just using the Leap Quake itself. Now, don't get me wrong, you can speed with Leap Quake. It is quite fast, but Slam, I just think, is an awful lot of fun to play. Again, with the cube, we can make this more powerful than it was last season. So this kind of goes together as a combo. You can use the Slam to get your keys, do your lower speeds, and when you want to start upping the difficulty, you can move over onto Leap Quake and then just go further and further as you work on your pushback. And then last up in B tier, I think this is quite an underrated build in the game, and this is going to be the Hydra Wizard. So this is going to be off the Hydra set. Again, this is one that you can build on Legacy of Dreams. 
but the Hydra set gives you a huge 80% damage reduction. We've got a really good speed build going on PTR with this. We could crunch out hundreds in three minutes with 800 Paragon and low level gems, not perfected gear. So I do think it is a little bit underrated in the community at the moment. Hydra's also got a pretty solid push option. Again, we were able to clear 110 with 800 Paragon, so it is pretty strong. It's also quite fast for keys. It was a lot faster than I was expecting. So if I was going to play Wizard, I probably would play Hydra. I will be rolling a Wizard on Hardcore. So I'm probably going to start this off because it is an awful lot of fun. Again, the Hydra's got a bit of love in the patch anyway. The build did get reworked. There's new supporting items. And again, fourth cube slot. Unfortunately, we are working in the Death Wish when we push. But if you don't want to do that for pushing, you don't need to for the speeds. You don't have to have the channel link. It is pretty solid. It is pretty fun. So now moving into A tier, and we're going to start off with the Grim Scythe Necro. Now in terms of solo push, this is one of the absolute best builds in the game. It doesn't get as much juice as you would think out of the fourth cube slot. The reason for that is because the Tragul's Corroded Fang was double dipping. So we were getting twice that modifier. That has been fixed, but we can now add extra juice in the form of the cube with another multiplier. So it's kind of going to be a little bit better than it was last season, but not terribly much so. Now the reason this doesn't go any higher is because it isn't the easiest thing in the world to speed with. We did build a cold scythe speed build last season, which was pretty good. So it is quite fun for speeds, but obviously it doesn't have tremendous wave clear. Again, it's really tanky. You'll definitely clear very high with this. If you do want to have a little bit of a solo push on something that's fairly easy to play, then Grim Scythe is maybe an option. I wouldn't say it's the easiest Necro build to play, but it is pretty solid. Next up in A tier, we have another Necro build. This is going to be Corpse Explosion. Now this, for me, gets a little higher than the Grim Scythe because whilst in terms of push, they might be about the same, maybe Corpse Explosion is a little bit weaker. We do have more access to speed builds. This is an awful lot more fun to speed with because Corpse Explosion absolutely demolishes low level content. Awful lot of fun for speeds. It's really satisfying to like blow up enemies, blow up the whole screen, just watch everything completely melt around you. The push build is really damage window orientated. You have to set all your buffs up and then you get this one opportunity to do some damage and then you have to reset again. So for casuals, I probably would say Grim Scythe is a better push build, but Corpse Explosion is a better speed build. So again, if you want to augment up speed pieces, you can then go and push with this if you want, if you want to get those extra tiers and go a bit higher. Next up in A tier, we've got the Mundanugu Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor. No changes for this, we just get some extra juice out of the fourth cube slot. This is a really good build for speeds. It's very quick, it does AoE damage, it looks really nice. The Spirit Barrage skill is really cool. It does push very high, it solo scales very well. The later and later you get into the game, the more and more damage this tends to do. So it is a very solid option. Super fast for keys super fast for bounties you can take the rework chicken set with it even if you want to just to make it even quicker loads of flexibility in which dot dirt loads of cooldown really good for all those kind of low level speed stuff and as i say a really good push option which is why we score mundanugu so highly and it is the starting set for the witch doctor which obviously is good news now next up in a tier we've got the whirlwind barbarian this normally makes it into s tier for me but i just think that with some of the changes some other builds are going to get an awful lot more out of the season theme we can work in focus and restraint now so we do get a nice damage kick to this it's still probably going to be there or thereabouts for the best bar build it's phenomenal for keys it's phenomenal for bounties it's really good for speed drifting. it's very easy to play it's very tanky so it's got an awful lot going for it but it isn't the starting set for the barb and as i say i think we can work in a few more builds that are going to get a bit more juice out of the season theme than this one but a really good choice if you're going to play barbarian you're probably going to set up whirlwind at some point and again it's something i'm probably going to play a little bit on season at the very least now next up in the a tier i've paired some wuku with two builds so this is one set and we're going to slice it two ways first off it's going to be tempest rush this isn't going to be the best way to play tempest rush next season but by all means you can do so it's still powerful and again it gets cube juice we're going to pair it though with wave of light which is absolutely phenomenal for keys it's so fast you can take the cane set and get 25 percent extra keys if you make yourself a gr build that will clear low level content very fast on wave of light it's really fun to play super smooth when you do get it set up right it really does hit quite hard Obviously the two go kind of together because it's going to be a lot of the same pieces. You're going to be able to org up both specs and you're going to be having a pretty good time of it. Wave of Light's also really good for bounties. Again, once you do get it fully set up and juiced up. And all in all, it's a pretty good combo, but it's not going to be the Monk's starting set. It's probably not going to be the Monk's most powerful build, but still it's really solid if you do want to play it. 
And then at the top of A tier, we've got the Aegis of Valor Crusader. Again, this is one with two builds off it. So we've got the Holy Shotgun, which we can use to push. Again, this is one of the best push builds in the game. It scales really well the more and more Paragon points you put on it. We're also going to have Fist of Heavens for a delicious speed build. So loads of lightning that goes everywhere. It was really hard to leave this out of the S tier. I did just want three builds in S tier. It was very, very close to making it. The speeds are phenomenal. The keys are phenomenal. The push goes really high. All in all, if you do roll Crusader, I suspect you're going to spend a lot of time playing this. And it is an incredibly good build. And it is an incredibly good suit with a couple of options on it. So this brings us up to S tier. These are the three top builds in the game for me. They're all absolutely phenomenal at everything. So we'll start off in third with the POJ Monk. So again, this is going to be Tempest Rush. This is the starting set for the Monk. Once we do get that one Kim Lao Fist Weapon popped out, this is going to be absolutely crushing. Again, it scales really well into late game for speeds. We can run really high speed rifts. It's phenomenally fast for keys. Straight out the gate, there's lots of movement speed in the build. You can put more items for more move speed really good for bounties again for that simple reason it's just so quick it does so much damage and it is tough and also we can take the shenlongs next season for a push and we can get a lot more juice on this than we would do normally so it is going to be a pretty good option i'm probably going to play quite a bit of poj on stream i'm looking forward to blowing up those enemies with those flurry stacks and second place and this was really close it was a really hard decision but i've gone for the god dh now this is the starting set it's really easy to put together it's phenomenal for keys it's phenomenal for bounties phenomenal for low level speeds great for pushing pound for pound without that fourth cube slot this for me is the best build in the game very easy to play again fairly tanky super casual friendly the only reason it hasn't got number one spot is probably because i'm a necro fan but a little biased but trust me if you roll yourself a god dh you can have a really good time it's a phenomenally fast start probably the fastest start for next season in my opinion I've played this a lot last season. I suspect that is probably the case for a lot of casual players watching this. I do like to play a different build each season and mix it up. So again, maybe that's clouded my judgment a little bit, but this is absolutely 100% S tier. And I'd say very close to the number one spot. And obviously no great surprise here. Number one is going to be Bone Spear. As I say, I do have a bit of Necro bias with it being my favorite class, but I do think this will be probably a solo XP farm meta. I did find it personally on PTR to be the most efficient way to farm XP because it does go super high. Again, it's really tanky, very easy to play push build. It was a lot smoother than any of the Necro or the push builds. I do think it will be up there for one of the best builds in the game. And again, if you're a casual player, with it being so tanky, with it being so powerful, with it being the starting set, it is a wonderful choice. You do have a slight problem with the amulet. It is quite hard to get initially. But once you do, everything's unlocked and you won't look back and you'll be absolutely blasting. And honestly, the world and their wife are going to be playing Necro next season. So this will be a build that you come across quite a lot. And personally, I think it's really fun and it is so fast. It's really good. So that's it, guys. Obviously, there were a few builds that didn't get in. Sweepsade has got a buff for next season. Invoker's got a buff. Frozen Orb. Pestilence also I really did want to include but just didn't have space. Also chicken changes for T16 for Witch Doctor. But all in all, I'm going to be playing all the classes on stream next season. It's going to be Wizard and Witch Doctor on Hardcore and then all the others on Softcore. So do come by Twitch, come say hello. I've pretty much got guides on most of these things. There will be links in the description to anything that I have made. And obviously we'll keep working on the builds as the season goes. Super excited. I hope you're as excited as I am. I've been the Filthy Casual. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Peace.